all right so today what we are going to do is we are going to start with this care of hiv and hepatitis infected patients right this is one of the topic for you and uh, i mean syllabus topic for you and very important for the syllabus also i mean examination also so that's why we are going ahead to uh, and to deal with this care of aids that is hiv and hepatitis infected patients right before going ahead with the, the total class or the proper class i am going to tell you something about a story per rectal examination story which happened with me in 2014 15 some of them may be knowing it already i have told it so what happened was there was one patient or there was one subject who had visited for examination the clinic for examination and then he had multiple fistulae right so he wanted to just get examined multiple fistulae in the sense it was kind of water can perineum i have told you about this water can perineum right so that is multiple fistulae there are many fistulae and uh, this person wanted to get examined and then get treated with shara sutra was his intention so what happened was i happened to examine him and looking his age and looking his body contour or texture he was some somewhat like kechexic right so kechexia is a sign of chronic illness usually seen in hiv infected or carcinoma infected patients right so i went ahead with examination of this subject and uh, luckily that day i happened to wear double gloves or that that means i had wore double gloves two here and two here i don't know what was the reason why my mind made me do this i was just in post graduation still but still i had, i wore double gloves and then i went ahead with the examination and when i saw there were multiple external openings or we can call it as multiple fistula which were also having internal openings so completely the perineum was full of external openings or holes discharging the pus so what happened was after this i took around 30 minutes 35 minutes of his time and then i was explaining him why this happens how this happens what happens how can we go ahead to manage this what can be the best treatment or what what can be the best available treatment then he happened to reveal that sir uh, looking at your care and concern i shouldn't hide with you anything uh, i have been detected with hiv since last 10 years is what he told so i told uh, you should have told this before examination because we have examined him we were in contact with his serum blood pus right and uh, so after examination he told me this then luckily i had wore double gloves so this was a small story it was a uh, true story to a true event which which had happened with me in 2014 15 so this is how we should go ahead with the examination of hiv or hepatitis infected subjects or care of them it is not that sir you are discriminating it or you are telling that they are infected yes they are infected but it is not about discrimination it is about examination it is about the examination rules it is about the spread of the disease right so so as a small story behind it now when it comes to uh, this topic when we go ahead with the introduction among all the other infections more stress or the diseases which are stressed upon more are aids and hepatitis right because the infections or the cross cross infections of this to any layman or any medical person may it be doctor nurse a phlebotomist anyone it may be always fatal right because once if they are infected the immune system weakens and then the body will attract lots of diseases right that's why it is very much important to prevent the spread of these kinds of diseases that's why we are here today especially students of shalyatantra either it is under graduation or post graduation or phd whatever it is we will definitely be going ahead for examinations for rectal examinations or incision and drainages or further procedures surgeries 
wherein definitely we come in contact with the bodily fluids and you are most likely to be infected if the proper care is not taken that's why if you see there will be special ot if a person has been detected with hpsag if the person is hpsag positive and if we are operating him hiv positive then we will have special ot wherein we will have special kinds of classes and then special kind of bound everything that's why otherwise we'll end up spreading it fine so when it comes to acquired immunodeficiency syndrome so it is a viral condition and it is very fatal because it deals with the immunity the immune gets suppressed a lot or compromised so when the immune is immunity is compromised then there will be lots of diseases which will be occurring fine and it is caused by human Uh, immunovirus or this is a retrovirus the virus attacks the immune system and makes the body vulnerable to wide range of life threatening infections and then it is one of it is sixth leading cause of death among the people of age group 25 to 44 years so this was a bit earlier statistics now if we go ahead it will be more also. and then many times hiv infected person remains asymptomatic but they are capable of transmitting the, the, the disease it may be 6 months 8 months 1 year up to 1 year they may not feel anything maybe they may be just feeling some feverish or weakness which may they which they may take it very easily and lightly and they may end up spreading it to many people the incubation period of hiv is 5 to 7 years and hiv that is this virus has been found in blood semen and cerebral spinal fluid in more concentration while in low concentration in saliva vaginal fluid breast milk and urine also so mode of transmission sexual transmission vaginal anal or oral sex blood contact direct blood contact it may be through blood transfusion as mentioned in the uh, point 4 or intravenous uh, drug abuse so also one of the reason breast feeding and uh, mother to child through placenta and then any health care person or a medical staff which i was talking about earlier so they may also get exposed to the, uh, this uh, hiv very easily clinical presentations go as follows fever persisting for more than one month here whenever there is fever for more than one month and it is not coming down with the normal medications whatever is being prescribed easily so you have to always think of some of the chronic diseases it may be hiv it may be tuberculosis so definitely they have, the person has to be subjected to lots of investigations fatigue and then night sweating significant weight loss which will be more than 10% and this may happen in just like 6 months 8 months 1 year or maybe 18 months generalized lymphadenopathy diarrhea for more than one month again this is one of the significant clinical presentation when it comes to hiv neuralgia arthralgia malaise body ache overall weakness and opportunistic infections wherein the person may get recurrent cold recurrent cough or recurrent eye infections cutaneous uh, cutaneous rashes and dermatitis fungal bacterial or viral infections all these can be seen in a person who has been afflicted with hiv now when it comes to investigations enzyme linked immunosorbent assay for screening and then western blot absolute cd4 count pcr test and anti hiv antibody detection and viremia quantification or with all these we can investigate the person and then subject him to all of these investigations or one of these investigation and then follow the protocol so when it comes to management the antiviral therapy is being uh, like done regularly these days and uh, nrti nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor some of them would be zidovudine or tadalafil all these can be used and then non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors wherein they can be uh, nevirapine or daliviridin etc and then protease inhibitors like ritonavir indinavir and then ampranavir mode of action of these non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors would be like inhibition of reverse transcription by causing the chain termination so this would be acting on the uh, the transcription of the virus and then immunotherapy with uh, alpha and gamma interferons or interleukins treatment of opportunistic infections wherein it would be a kind of symptomatic treatment 
if they get uh, fistula in between because of uh, the gland infections then you have to treat that if they get cold cough recurrent cold cough that you have to treat then treatment of tumors also the treatment for lymphadenopathy anti cd3 or il2 after highly active anti retroviral therapy finally bone marrow transplantation so these would be the course or these would be the the protocols of approach in order to treat the hiv infected person next when it comes to hepatitis it is a inflammation or a chronic inflammation of the liver caused by viral infection there are main, mainly five types of hepatitis viruses referred to as a b c d and e and these five types are of greatest concern because of the burden of illness and the potential for outbreaks and epidemic spread especially when we talk about hpsh or hepatitis b that is going to spread very faster and then most of them would remain asymptomatic right hepatitis virus b and c lead to chronic disease and are most common cause of liver cirrhosis and cancer so this chronic irritation of liver leads to liver cirrhosis right the damage the chronic damage caused by chronic irritation cause liver cirrhosis and then cancer also. And then hepatitis a and e are typically caused by ingestion of contaminated food or water b c and d usually occur as a result of parenteral contact it may be uh, the bodily fluid like through blood or through the reproductive fluids etc common modes of transmission for these viruses include uh, receipt of contaminated blood or blood products invasive medical procedures using contaminated equipment and for hepatitis b transmission and uh, and from mother to fetus at birth or by sexual contact so it's very important that when you are going ahead with the procedure you definitely screen the person or the subject or the sufferer who is going to undergo the procedure with all these investigations especially the hbsg acute infection may occur with limited or no symptoms or may include symptoms such as jaundice dark urine extreme fatigue nausea vomiting and abdominal pain and it may be persistent also so some of the preventive measures for medical staff here go will go as follows when examining a patient especially for per rectal per vaginal examinations gloves should be worn by the medical staff this is what i was talking about it can be double glove also double glove examination is very better and recommended usage of maximum disposable instruments so that we'll just dispose it after using may it be surgical uh, gown or surgical arteries or the equipments which are used for the procedure reusable instruments to be pro properly autoclave or sterilized medical staff having injury should not be allowed at all for the uh, surgical ward or the ot whenever these kinds of procedures are going ahead if any medical staff or student is exposed to hiv infected patients blood then anti retroviral therapy should be started as i told it may be zidovudine or ritonosin lamivudin indinavir and then nalfenavir so all these we can go ahead and then start if one is not available then at least we should go ahead with the available ones preventive measures for the ot theater staff that is operation theater staff a high degree of theater discipline is very much essential in order to minimize the risk of blood contact to the staff involved unnecessary instruments should be removed from the theater in order to avoid contaminating these instruments so if you go to visit some ot some of the ot's there will be some of the equipments which are kept unnecessarily and then that unnecessary equipment would be blood stained through some of the reasons or uh, patient blood stain and then that may end up transmitting the disease within seconds so unnecessary equipments have to be removed in order to clear the things and in order to make the operation theater risk free and then uh, less cluttered operation theater should always be less cluttered it should be spacious and less cluttered the staff involved in the operation should always wear double gloves plastic aprons so that we dispose it later uh, and then boots eye goggles and mask very important all cuts and wounds on the staff should be covered or we should avoid that staff into the operation theater sharp should, uh, should not be passed from hand to hand these are all ot discipline which we call it as uh, if there is a needle for local anesthesia and then we pass it directly or we try to recap it with two hands those all things should, should be avoided we have to just recap it with single hand and then needles uh, should not be guided with fingers and uh, hand needles should not be used in the operation so all these things if we do then we may end up pricking ourselves right self injury for the purpose of wound drainage 
closed apparatus should be used wherein there will not be spillage of the blood or the serum. Any blood spilled in the operation theater should be decontaminated by chlorus as soon as possible. The used, uh, the used disposable surgical instruments uh, in the theater would be of great help. That is, uh, usage of disposable surgical instruments would be of great help. It will a little bit increase the cost of the surgery, but definitely it will be very much safe for the staff and the patient. Too. After use, the disposable surgical instruments should be disposed of properly in a well marked sharp containers. If we go ahead with bio waste management, then for the sharps, we should have separate boxes wherein we have to dispose the sharps. Non disposable instruments should be handled carefully after use and then properly sterilized and then put into UV cabinet. Well marked disposable bags should be used for the collection of waste from the theater and the waste should be incinerated. So we have to finally burn it. Otherwise, there is all the possibility that we are going to spread the disease. And then ward staff is all, so uh, earlier we saw the operation theater staff, now we will be seeing the ward staff, what will be the preventive measures. It is advisable to keep the patient into a single room after the surgery so that the risk of other patients in the ward is minimized. It would be advisable for the room to have attached toilet facilities so that they will not, not come out or then they will not panic the other patients. Unnecessary equipment and furniture should be definitely removed from the room where there is a uh, HBSCG or HIV infected patient in order to sim simplify the decontamination process because uh, later we may have to burn it or we may have to leave it. So that's very important. And then a separate set of eating utensils for the patients, although disposable, disposable utensils may be used, a separate set can be used. Now it will not be spread through eating and all, but HBSCG. It's very notorious, we cannot tell about it. So it's always better that we keep all disposable equipment, utensils, plates and spoons. Contents of bedpans and urinals can be flushed down uh, as sluice as there is no need to treat waste before disposal. Uh, the usual bedpan disinfector would be sufficient, although it may be wise to use the same bedpan for the patient throughout the whole period. So we can just flush it over uh, into the commodes or into the uh, drainages without any process of burning it, right? So there are some words which are having spelling mistake. That is because of the slide, the system is changed, that's why. So this is about the preventive measures for ward stuff. And then soil linens should be placed in a labeled bag. The, the usual hot wash cycle would be sufficient for disinfection. Autoclaving may be used for heavily contaminated linens. So usually if we use disposable linens, that's very good so that we just dispose it uh, post usage, but definitely it is going to increase the cost. If despite all these uh, precautions and accident involving the blood contaminated sharp take place in the theater or in the ward or anywhere else, the clinic, OPD, IPD, wherever, then uh, following action should be taken. A baseline blood specimen should be taken from the staff involved, whoever has been pricked or crossbred. And then tested, another sample should be taken at three and six months later for HIV testing. And then till then, they have to be put on antiretroviral therapy. So nosocomial infections, hospital acquired infections, hospital acquired infection is a cross infection of one patient by another patient or medical staff, anyone. So the patient, when he has visited the hospital or when he is admitted in the hospital, he's fine. But then while discharged or in between the stay, he gets some other infection these kinds of infection we can term as hospital acquired infection or nosocomial infections. So here hospital acquired infections may be, con uh, may, may be considered from uh, source and then routes of spread. So patients infection, medical staff infection and then hospital environment. And the routes would be direct contact, droplet infection, airborne particles and then ward procedures. So all these can are potential enough to transmit one disease to the patient who may not be suffering from it. And then it may be a hospital environment in, involving the beds, clothes, furniture, utensils, infected urine, sputum, feces, wound discharge, pus, any bodily fluid, maybe any bodily fluid. Through this, it can be spread. So we have to avoid these kinds of nosocomial infection. This, this can be a, a small short question for you. What is meant by nosocomial infection? It's not about just writing the answer also. We have to adopt these practices and principles in our practice also. So that we are not going to give any chance, any single chance for the spread of any infection. 
prevention of uh, nosocomial infection or hospital acquired infections isolation of infectious patients like it may be tb gangrene wound infection we have to keep them in a separate ward medical staff suffering from any infection should be kept away from the ward and proper hand washing and sanitization prevention of droplet infection by using cap and masks proper ventilation of the ward it may be through usage of uh, high like uh, high efficacy air conditioners through which we can definitely help the air to get cleansed or air purifiers we can use then disinfection of the ward can be done regularly proper asepsis precautions before any ward procedure just because it is opd procedure we cannot just go ahead and do it without sterilized equipments or without washed equipments so it has to be done properly proper disposal disposal of urine stool sputum wound discharges and organs is very essential so this was about a small point regarding the care of hiv and hbsg infected patients fine so thank you very much for hearing this sunil ji if you have any doubt you can let me know